Today on the CO2 project, what I'm going to do is get the power sorted and we're going to do that by starting off with this extension lead. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to rewire it again. Now, if you don't know how to use uh, 240 volt appliances or work on 240 volt appliances, don't do it. It uh, can be quite dangerous. I know what I'm doing, so I'm fine with what I'm setting up here. So what I've got is the extension cable at the bottom, which I've got sitting on some Velcro strips. Then I've got it going into a plug at the moment. Now we'll change this later on and you'll see everything's all secured down. That way that cable's not moving around. Now for the intake on that tube that I installed last time, I'm going to use this type of mesh, which I'm going to tape over the bottom of that intake. That way it'll stop any bugs or things flying up into it. Hopefully a little bit of dust as well. Now we can move on to the air pump. So as you can see, I've got the power lead running into this transformer pack, which is a 240 volt to 12 volt transformer. From there, it then runs out to the air pump itself. So I'm just gonna sit these around for the moment, just so we can set it up and test everything. Now we're going to run the hose from the air pump up through into that top section. Uh, so I'm going to run that down through the pipe. One end we're going to attach to the air pump and then the other end we've got to this diverter or I guess a splitter. Um, now on the end of this I'm going to do a one-way air valve. That way that no air is traveling back through the other way. Uh, kind of adds a bit more of a controlled test as well. So they slot into the end of these air hoses. And so you can see here clamped all the way up through into the pipe up into the top. We've got the splitter, which then diverts out through those one-way air valves and then into the tubes, which you'll hear me put my finger over and you can hear a little slight difference. So that means the air is going through. Now we've got to work on the air coming out from those tubes and how we're going to re record the CO2 levels. So what I'm going to do is put a brace at the top of this top section and we're going to add these containers. Now I've got four containers, one for each tube. And what I'm going to do is attach them down to that brace and the same thing, we're going to run the line that goes all the way into the tube out into another one-way air valve. That air valve will be in the actual tube itself. That way the air flows not flowing back through down into the tubes or any other, we're not, like we're not getting any disturbances in the tests. So I've attached those one-way valves in. Now we just need to attach the containers down to that brace. Once that's done, you can see there, there's a little bit of movement. Uh, I've screwed the sides of that brace so I can take the whole thing out if I need to, just with two screws. We've got the lids that go on the top of the container, which will then seal the containers. Uh, I will need to have some type of uh, output or some type of uh, hole for the air to get out so it's not completely sealed, but we'll work on that later on. I've also got another brace which can go underneath just to hold it there uh, in case there's any movement or whatever. Uh, it's basically all secure. So now we've got both of those braces secure on the actual unit. What we're going to have to do is work out how we get the air from the tubes up into those containers. So I have these straight joining pieces and then I cut it in half and we've got four separate pieces which I've glued into place. I'm just using these drill bits uh, to stabilize it and that way it doesn't fall into the actual tube itself. Once it's all glued, I then get a set of T pieces which I'm going to add some extra tubes. Bear in mind, all these tubes are the same length. Now, there's a method to the madness I've got here with a couple pieces, but basically I'm joining them on to the end of those glued pieces into the tubes. Everything's all sealed now. You can run the tube up into the containers on the top. I do have a second tube that runs off on that T piece, which I'll explain in another video. Next video, I'll look at the power distribution and a power distribution board. But as for this video, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe to keep up to date with the project. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.